Hey guys, thanks for joining us for 412 Real Talk. Uh, what we want to do in these videos is just have conversations that help uh, you connect faith with life. We want to help you understand how authentic faith in Jesus Christ actually does make a difference in our everyday lives. Uh, no matter what problem that we face, uh, no matter what circumstance we might find ourselves in. Uh, we also hope that these videos uh, help you have a living faith with the people that you're around on a daily basis. Uh, that you would know how to be an example to those that you're around and how to live a life of imitation uh, that others will follow and ultimately that will point them to Jesus Christ. Uh, today, I've got Ben with us, and uh, we're just going to have a conversation, Ben. Uh, ask you a couple questions and uh, just to uh, encourage people that are, that are watching. Um, you just finished uh, your first year of college. Uh, you've been out of student ministry for about a year. Uh, and, uh, so first off, uh, man, how's your first year been this transition from leaving high school, going into college? I mean, obviously we've got COVID-19, so that's some changes nobody was expecting, but uh, why don't you just share with us, Hey, how's your first year of college been this transition, leaving high school? And maybe what are some things that God's taught you this first year? I mean, I thought it's been good personally. Uh, although it's been different, obviously with all the the sickness that's been going around and everything and all the different changes. But I mean, overall, it was a great first year. Uh, I mean, in high school, my last few years, I tried my best to kind of shy away from a lot of people at the school just because they might not have been the best. Uh, but going into college and getting tied into all the different ministries that they have on campus were just fantastic and made lots of new friends. And I was able to probably start off my year the best way that I could have. Um, and obviously taking those last few months off was tough and disappointing, not knowing that that would be my last time on campus or last time at BCM or last time at whatever. Um, but I thought overall it's been good. And I feel like God's probably been teaching me peace and patience. Um, those are probably the two biggest things is just being patient with what he's trying to teach me, what he's trying to show me, and um, being peaceful with everything that goes on in my life. You know, it's been, it's been challenging. It has been easy, you know, going through the first year of college. College is, college is tough. It's not walking the park, you know. Um, but overall, I felt like he's been showing me the best way possible to just literally rely on him and be able to just put all my faith and trust in him as well. How does that look like practically? Like how, like peace and trust, like how have you learned that? How have you put that into practice on a daily basis? Probably one of the biggest things, I don't remember who said it, but somebody said, I know it was here at the church, that when you pray to God, he has one of three answers, either go, no, or slow. Either a yes, go for it, no, don't do it, or just be patient with it. And I feel like that's the biggest one, is just putting prayer into my daily life as much as I can and just listening to what he has to say to me and reading the scripture and just figuring out, okay, what is he trying to teach me? What is he trying to tell me with what I personally want to do? And how does that relate to what he wants me to do? Because mm. overall, it's his plan over mine. Yeah, so that's so good. We've got uh, a few students that are graduating this year. And so they're just one step behind you uh, and in the stage of life that, that you're in. Um, they're leaving high school, they're going into college. Um, what are maybe some things that you would wanna tell students like that who are making that, that transition? It's probably one of the biggest transitions of someone's life when they're leaving high school, uh, they're moving into college, or you know, starting adulting, uh, so to speak. What are maybe some big things that you would want to tell somebody like that? Uh, probably the biggest thing that I want to say is don't forget where you come from. I mean, if you are listening to this right now, you probably come to this youth group a whole bunch, and this is where you come from. I mean, going to a church on a regular basis and trying your best to live the life that you should, and that shouldn't change no matter where you are, whether you go to a college 50 miles from home and your hometown or across the country. It shouldn't change. And so I guess the biggest one is just, Remember your purpose, you know, your purpose is to grow in your faith with, with Christ and, and glorify him and expand his kingdom. And so that's probably the biggest one is just keep yourself as close to the way that you are now and don't let your life change based on your surrounding change. How have you done that maybe in this first year? What are some maybe some practical things that, that have helped you stay rooted in that? Well, the biggest one is probably making new friends in a good way, not in a in a bad way. I mean, I got connected personally with BCM, which is the 
the Bible Collegiate Ministry at Winthrop. And I'm sure every single college has something along those lines. And I think getting connected and tied into that and making a lot of new friends that can keep you accountable for the different change that's coming ahead of your life, uh, that's probably the best and biggest way that you can do it. That's what I did at least. Yeah. Or, I mean, if you're leaving Rock Hill, you're moving to a college that's somewhere else, um, if they don't have BCM, uh, even if they do, probably finding a really good, solid, Bible-believing church uh, yeah, to be part of say, yeah, when they're not here. Mm -hmm. um, that's really good. How about uh, some of our students uh, that are uh, sophomores, especially juniors? Um, you've, we've got a you know handful of students maybe that um, they've only got a few years left as a student in their high school and uh, as a student here in student ministry. Um, what might be some practical encouragement that you would give to students like that who uh, might say, I really want to make a difference. I want to leave a mark um, before I, I make the jump out of student ministry and into college. What might be a word that you might speak to them saying, if you want to make an impact, if you want to leave a mark, if you want to have influence, you need to do this. What might you tell a student like that? Well, the biggest thing I'd say is that whether you want to have influence or not, you're going to have influence. The mm -hmm. older you get, especially in the youth group, the more and more people will start to look up to you and follow what you do and and pay close attention to your every move. And although that can be intimidating, at the same time, that can be very helpful for you. Um, but the biggest thing is just, again, not forgetting where you come from and always making sure you have a good group of accountability. Um, that was my biggest struggle was that when I was a freshman and sophomore in high school, uh, I, I was one person at church and one person at high school. And I was never really that person that tried to take what they had as a, uh, what, who they were at church into my school. You know, I just kind of forgot all about it. And if somebody were to say, wait, you go to church, they would be very surprised. Mm. But when I got into the later stages of high school, I started realizing that this is the point where I start making the most impact on other people that are below me. And it can be good or it can be bad. And that's all up to me. And that's all on the way that I live my life. Um, and so I would say the biggest one is not going out there trying to be an influence because you will be an influence for sure, but making sure that you can do everything in the right way, owning up to your mistakes, learning from them, and then trying your best to be the best person that you can be. That's really good. So, so everybody's being an example. The question yeah. is, what kind of example are you being? Exactly. That's really good. How about for some of our younger students? Like we've got uh, a, a good number of kids in middle school. We've especially got some students that are coming in sixth grade. So they're, they're leaving children's ministry. They're coming up to student ministry. Uh, they used to be, um, you know, the big fish, and now they're kind of like the little fish. Um, or some of them, uh, you know, some of our students maybe are seventh or eighth graders. Um, you know, when I was that age, uh, I kind of felt like I couldn't do anything. Like I had to wait before I could... Uh, set any sort of example or have any kind of influence on, on people around me, especially people that are above me. And so I kind of didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. um, what might be something that you tell some of our younger students who they've got six or seven years as a middle school, high school student, they've got six or seven years uh, in the student ministry. What might you, you say to someone like that? Well, the biggest thing I'd say is for starters, uh, my life scenario was a lot different than how theirs is in a more drastic sense. So when we moved here, when I was in seventh grade, back in Alabama, still in sixth grade, I was still in children's ministry. So when I came here, I was at a new state, new city, new church, new youth group. And it was a total change for me. And I know it can be very intimidating, but I'd say the biggest one is to look up to the people that are also in the youth group and see the way that they are. I mean, you're going to have people in this youth group that are fantastic influences and that will show you the way. And the better you can get connected with them, the better your experience is going to be. And not come in here every day scared and timid about it and not wanting to get yourself involved. The more you get yourself involved, the more comfortable you will feel and the better it will be. Because if you can follow their example, you'll be able to be an example when you get older as well. Mm. Um, and even going within the new school, I mean, all these kids are going to be going up to middle school as well. And I know that Outside of church, being an example in your school as well, unlike I did for the, who knows how long before I got to my later years of high school, um, that's another big thing is making sure that you can be an example just as much at school as you are as a follower at church. Mm. So That's so good. Is there anything else that you would want to share with, with people are, that are watching? 
whether that be parents or students? Um, I mean, the biggest thing I would say is that uh, there's, a, there's a verse that I really like. I don't know if anybody knows it, but it's 1 Timothy 4.12. And I've heard of that verse. Yeah, and it literally you says. You guys heard of that verse? Yeah, and it literally says, "Be an example." And I feel like no matter what age you are, no matter what gender, what what grade, what anything, you're always gonna have to be an example for somebody that's below you or even above you. They don't have to be younger than you for you to be an example, um, but just in your your speech, your conduct, love, faith, and what's the last one? Uh, purity. Purity. Exactly. Gotcha. Making sure that you can be an example in not just those five categories, but everything that you do. Um, and making sure that whether you're in the church or outside the church, you are always striving to be the best you that you can be. That's so, so good, man. Hey, thanks for having this conversation with us. And, and guys, thank you so much for watching. Hey, if you've got questions, if there are issues that, that you'd like for us to talk about, leave us a comment. Uh, you can send me an email, uh, dan at nbcrh.org. Uh, we would love to... Uh, uh, help you in any ways that we can. We want to help encourage you to do just what Ben you're talking about. Be an example. Uh, live a life of imitation that, that other people will follow. Live a life that will point people to Christ. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll, we'll catch you next time.